read through um, the staff overview. Uh, due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Design Review Committee is authorized to meet electronically. And in accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen to this meeting. Public access, however, is being provided in accordance with a temporary amendment to the Open Meetings Law uh, the Design Review Committee is providing access to this meeting by hosting the video, uh, including both video and telephone access options with additional access through live streaming of the meeting, um, which we are using Zoom meeting for the remote meeting. And I'm going to need to share my screen real quick. If I can... I gotta open the. Have to open her email. She sent it through an email. Where are you? And now I can share. No nope. more. Now I can share screen. So now I can go through and mention that uh, anyone who is viewing this on ORCA, um, so all all members of the design review committee have the ability to communicate at the same time during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to listen and if desired participate in this meeting by real time by joining the zoom meeting at this address um, which you can also get by going online to the city website and going to the agendas and this link is also provided or by calling in at this number here and if you're calling in the meeting ID and the password is here again, these are all these all can also be found online. Uh, and I'll leave this up for a few minutes. Uh, we previously gave notice of uh, public of the necessary information for accessing this meeting, including how to access this meeting using telephone or video. It's posted in the agenda and the instructions have also been provided on the city's website, which is shown here. If you have any problems accessing this meeting, uh, please email me, um, Mike Miller, mmiller at montpelier-vt.org. Or if you have difficulties while accessing the video, you can um, also contact me through the chat function. We generally have two people usually um, monitoring, so I will be trying to do um, both uh, assistance with the meeting as well as following the chat, so please be patient with me on that. And when you have logged on to the meeting, you should have an opportunity to tell the moderator, me, which applications you wish to comment on. When the chair announces that a time for public comment for applications arrives, the moderator will unmute members of the public based on the order you've submitted in 10. If you're interested in speaking, and did not say you would like to speak previously, please raise your hand or state your name if uh, you're unmuted and city staff uh, will add you to the queue. Once the chair has recognized you to participate, the moderator will unmute the microphone and confirm that you can be heard. You are then free to provide your questions and comments, aiming to keep them to two minutes. The members will have an opportunity to respond or ask questions of you and the applicant may have an opportunity to respond. The chair may grant additional time for speakers who have follow-up questions and comments. If you have finished, your microphone will be muted again. The chair will then call upon the next person to speak. You will be able to provide additional input, but only after the chair has recognized you again. If no one requests to provide additional in information, the chair will move on. Continuing the meeting if necessary. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting, it will be con continued to a time and place certain. 
Please note that all votes taken at, during this meeting are that are not unanimous will need to be done by roll call vote in accordance with the law. And I'll now hand it back over to Steve Everett. We'll move forward with the, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Second. Do I hear a second? Yarek, second. All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Eric. Seth. Steve. Okay, the agenda is approved. Unless anybody has any other comments, we'll move forward to the first application for 34 Barry Street, Washington County Mental Health regarding exterior renovations re associated with a change of use. Is there someone from Washington County or a representative who can explain the application? Uh, Michael Curtis from Washington County. <clears throat> uh, Jay uh, sent an email to city staff. I'd like to defer to him to go ahead and talk. Okay. So were the architects on it? Michael Beatty from our office is also on. We'll be screen sharing exhibits. Uh, Michael, I thought it might first be just you give like a paragraph or two of just what you see the building being used for and what it provides for your uh, services. Okay, thank you. Uh, so Washington County Mental Health currently operates a uh, day program for people with serious and persistent mental illnesses. That's at 157 Barry. It's in a very old house uh, that has um, limited accessibility. Uh, old steep staircases has a food shelf in it that's on the third floor many of the clients can't get up to it we've been looking for an accessible space to move that so that's what we propose to do with what we refer to as the middle section of the um <clears throat> of 34 berry street the front section we propose to um house therapists who will be serving uh youth and young adults in an intensive outpatient program, which is a form of therapy that's uh, um, <clears throat> typically used for kids with uh, significant needs. Uh, we're hoping that in the rear section, um, we can convert that to a, an accessible apartment that we could uh, make available to the, the same client group as uh, would be served in the middle section. So adults with severe and persistent mental illness. Okay. So uh, we looked at the building with them. I think that Washington County found that uh, this existing brick building, I think from the forties to be sort of <coughs> rather stark and devoid of, of uh, detail. Um, and we're interested in somewhat of a stronger presence. They needed to provide, as Michael said, accessibility to the three sections of the building. Uh, the forward section is, is raised, so we would be looking at a ramp there, which will be a concrete ramp with railing. Um, and then the, on the site, there will also be some handicapped uh, parking spaces, two van accessible and one automobile, one uh, for the front area and two for the side. Uh, part of providing for the ramp was going to need a larger landing at the top of the, of the ramp, as well as a canopy to provide some cover. Currently, the forms uh, have, a, have a curve to them, a, a little bit of, as was noted by one of the members of Washington County, almost sort of a bit of a deco flavor. And they thought about perhaps that we might sort of play upon uh, that concept. And so that's kind of what, what we took as a little bit of a lead in looking at how we might add add some interest uh, to it. Uh, why don't Mike Beatty, if you can screen share our exhibits. So this is a sheet um, which shows the composite of what we're looking to do. Down in the lower uh, area, you see sort of the color rendering um, with the brick building and we're leaving the sort of large picture windows in, but one of the elements of sort of the, that style of architecture is a little bit more of a breakup of fenestration. It's an aluminum window, and we're looking at adding some 
uh, mutton divisions within that such that it would add a little bit of greater interest. We're also looking at adding some banding, which was sort of a part of that period. And there are, which later we can show you, uh, there's some precedent for some of this type of treatment on Berry Street, which is a rather eclectic combination of architecture. Uh, so we would be adding this, this banding, um, which you see as well as the sort of larger canopy overhang and the railing of the ramp. Uh, the building really has no needs a new roof. It doesn't have any insulation, so we're going to be insulating the roof, which will also give us an opportunity for a little larger and wider uh, cornice at the top. Um, then in the, the front of the building is the brick, and we're basically going to leave the brick as is. Uh, as we move around to the side, now we're on the, you can, uh, so he's drawing to the front. Now this is sort of the west side where Mike's hand is, which is all black, and that is painted kind of a, a light, almost cream yellow color, and we're basically going to look at leaving that. We would be adding some new new windows and of a, a combination of uh, sort of fixed and awning, and again, trying to sort of respond to that style a little bit. There would also be some of these areas of banding which would be attached to the building. We are thinking we might use a material such as boral, if you're familiar with that. It's a reconstituted fly ash. It's totally rot resistant, uh, so it doesn't break down. And we would likely color that um, sort of a light gray, similar to the foundations on the building. So it would sort of respond to that material precedent. Um, we would also have two smaller canopies at the two entrances uh, on this side, one the far left being the apartment and then the right sort of that sort of area of community, more communal sort of food service area. Uh, as we move to the left or to the north, because of this being an apartment, we need um, some uh, egress windows. So we're looking into adding some larger egress windows. These will be um, sliders that we can provide for the area required for egress. And then there's one, if you move down, looking at the north facade, uh, which will provide access for a bedroom at that location. Um, if we look back at the site plan, there are currently 16 parking places uh, at the site in this district, in this area, none are required, uh, but we will maintain 14. We will be reducing by two in order to provide the accessible spaces. So there's a, on the, on the uh, sort of west, north, the southwest corner, there's an accessible uh, fan space. And then we hope to provide a small area for uh, accessibility uh, pedestrian accessibility to the front, as well as then the ramp at that location. There will then be another uh, van accessible space on the west, sort of in the center area of the building there, uh, which will provide van access into the central third of the building. And then finally, a automobile accessible space uh, at the further south end, which provides access to the door that will go into the apartment. Um, so that's a quick overview. Our, our basic materials of the building will remain as they are. Uh, we will be adding some of this fenestration and detailing to window and uh, some banding again to provide a bit of added interest. That's a quick overview. Uh, questions? Uh, maybe one thing I'll show you, uh, looking at the, you know, one of the things you got, you look at is sort of context. Uh, we have a few exhibits we can show you that on Barry Street. Oh, did you, let's see the existing. Should we look at the existing images first, Mike? So they can see that. So here's the existing, if you're not familiar sure, with it. Be. Yeah. So um, yes, the. You. Upper three there are sort of the existing building, uh, which as you see is pretty stark. And there's a little bit of the precedent of the curved canopy above and the curved stair below, which we will be kind of repeating, but making them larger in relationship to the handicap ramp. And then adding some of the bending, those existing windows will remain, but we'll be adding some of that horizontal banding within them, they are aluminum. And then at the bottom, you see the west elevation, which is the sort of yellow cream 
uh, block. We will be maintaining that. We'll be changing out a few of the doors and we're looking at a at going to a different color scheme where we keep the cream, but we'd have sort of doors that would be of a, of a blue color um, and perhaps some of the trim and a few windows would be added. We're thinking uh, would be a Pella um, fiberglass black. So it won't necessarily relate to the color scheme in the front, but it, as you see, it's very different from that, that element. Jay, your, your, your morale trim that you yeah. have on, on the, I don't know what facade that is, but it seems like you have a bunch of utilities that are in the way of that. They would, but, yeah, they, some of them are going to be amended and others we would probably just interrupt the trim if they need to remain, but you're right. Okay. And how are you yeah. adding in the fenestration? Uh, we think, now I can't believe I'm actually saying this because I hate simulated divided light, but uh, we would just be applying it to the glass. Hmm. So it's an SDL? Yes, you got it. Yeah, and we probably do it inside and outside. Uh, Mike, why don't we look at maybe just, it's there isn't really a close contextual precedent, but there's certainly the other brick buildings on the block, um, two down. If, if you're on the upper left, you see the building and then a wood frame, uh, and then the um, Catholic school and beyond that, uh, the senior center. So then to the right, you see the, um, uh, the Catholic school and a combination of sort of more contemporary at the rear and uh, more traditional forward, but also some precedence of some some brick with a, a lighter banding and some canopy precedent. You see where at their entrance in the right photo, uh, I think that's one of their main entrances where they've added that, that canopy for some, some protection. And then moving down, we have the uh, uh, senior center with some of its its combination of, of gray and brick, as well as what happens across the street with the Montpelier Rec building. Are, are you so, matching the, is the intention to match the design of the existing canopy over to the side? Well, it'll be more or less, yes. And that, that it it is, is a straight, side and then a curve. So we will be doing sort of that again, but larger. Um, you can see, I think if you go back to, to our exhibit, our uh, um, now it doesn't show very large, but it, it, it uh, in the upper right, you can see the shape of it there that he's circling. Mm -hmm. But we, when you come up the ramp, you'll terminate beneath that canopy and then we'll support it back to the building and up with some uh, brackets or cable probably. And then there'll be some steps on off toward the east. We'll have a small planter there and somewhat of the intent of that is that that will provide an opportunity for the drainage that comes off of the canopy uh, to land within that planter. And then the side canopies, how do they drain? Side canopies are Quite small. Those, I think, we probably are just going to drain down into the site, as happens along the full site at this time. But it would be be fairly minor. So there'll, there'll be a leader. Yeah. That there may be just thinking. a scupper, also, Jay. Pardon me. A scupper. Yeah. Well, so that it will oh, drain okay. probably to a, a point a little bit away from the building at a scupper location. Mm -hmm. But probably not a, a vertical leader, I guess. Right. Yeah. Just an overflow. Yeah. Is this a flat roof, Jay? It is basically a flat roof, an interior drain. Yeah. And your intention is to keep it as a flat roof? Yep. Yeah. yeah, it'll be a flat roof, interior drain. We are adding insulation, mm -hmm. uh, both probably some inside and out, as there isn't much there now. It has a partial basement, um, which is concrete, so there's quite a fire separation between the, the, those levels. We will also be adding fire separation between the first, the middle, and the rear section. 
uh, basically keeping the uh, the brick. We we had looked at you know some precedent of buildings of this treatment, and more often than not, they've been painted or have a treatment upon them, which might have been in some ways more interesting. But we thought we should retain. Well, here's some of the things we had looked at, uh, uh, but that we should retain the, the brick and not not change that. Uh, Jay Eric, um, yeah. Uh, going back, is this is this building listed on the National Register as a contributor? It's originally when when Vermont did its review of historic buildings in Montpelier, it was identified and considered to be a non-contributing structure. In a later round of those, uh, they did consider it contributing. But it's not like individually listed per se. No, no, but it's it's in the district. I yeah. should have looked that up, but I didn't. Uh, I guess my comment is this, and and uh, you can respond to it. I think one of the uh, character defining features of that building is its starkness. I mean, it's a it's a brick wall, four brick walls with some windows in it, and you're proposing to change that quite a bit with the banding and the cornice and adding uh, dividers in the window. Um, I haven't come to a conclusion exactly how I feel about that. Yeah. Well, uh, you're right. I mean, it, I guess I'd call it non-character defining in its current, <laughs> uh, it's so, it's so stark. Um, and, and I think, you know, again, in some of those images we looked at, we thought about, well, could we actually Code it or treat it and, and make it sort of a more of a strong statement of something else, but felt we should. So I think it's pretty obvious you can see in effect the original building and its brick and its treatment um, and respect that. But uh, I don't know that we sort of damage that integrity. It certainly is going to change it. You're right. Uh, but I don't know that, that what it is or was is not recognizable. Jay, this is Steve. When was yeah. the building originally built? It was late, uh, let's see, the four, late 40s, I believe. Mike, do you remember that date? I believe it was 1947. Yeah. They, they, and just Eric, from a procedural standpoint, they aren't taking any state or federal monies where 106 comes into play. OK. I try not to mix 106 and design review. I, under, I understand, but just as background. <laughs> um, any lighting going in? Uh, just at the canopies. And we've submitted those. And they're all, I believe, less less than uh, 1,000 lumens as per the requirement. So there's really none lighting on the building other than light at the canopies for the, uh, the entrances. And signs? Uh, probably will be, but not determined at this point. I think, Mike, I assume you'll have a sign, but hasn't really been conceptually developed. The, uh, I, I think the changes you're doing in regard to the building's functionality are just fine on the back section. Uh, changing doors and windows, which makes it a functional building for its, uh, for the new use. Um, I think that, uh, and, and I, understand a bit of the cornice is that going to give you a little bit more uh heights in terms of getting away from the flat roof or is that an issue well it, it will in the because we'll be adding insulation it is going to be taller than what might just simply be a drip edge at the moment uh so yes it does and frankly we thought that added a bit of an opportunity for some banding interest I think, I mean, that becomes a practical thing. So you're not just dumping water and snow sliding down the side of the building. I, I, I think the, the, I have the most difficulty with the added banding. Uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, takes away significantly from the starkness of the building. Uh, and. Uh, yeah. And that was the, that was the interest and intent from the I, owner. owner. <laughs> I, I know, and yeah. I, I uh, uh, I'm a little bit conflicted with it. I would certainly prefer that the 
uh, banding be uh, not installed. I just it changes the character of the building quite a bit, but cornice doesn't really change it. Right. Do any of the other committee members have any input or opinions about the banding? Yeah, the, the banding could be removed conceivably, right? Fairly easily. Yeah. If it had to be. In the yeah, it wouldn't have to be permanent. We could uh, do it like on the standoff we talked about so that there's not a moisture issue also right. for. Right. I like the banding. I think it does give you some character. I don't mind it either. And the fact that it's removable, um, I'm, I'm for it. I have no objection to it either. I think it gives a little more interest to the building. It, it certainly it, it has been since 47, a non-contributing building in, in terms of historical character. So I don't mind the banding at all. When I've mentioned the, the location of people, they say, what building? <laughs> <laughs> it's so plain, nobody knows where it is or what it is. Or what it is. Yeah, what style would you say that is? <laughs> you know, certainly, if this were something of a strong architectural style and feature, we wouldn't you know, think of, of adding. Uh, but it's just such a plain palette. Banding looks like it's at two different levels. It is. That's intentional. And this this would be reversible, so it's it's, it's uh, what was the material? I didn't catch when if you said oh. boral. We've often used that where we're concerned about things rotting. Uh, it's a I've used it uh, for trim and down low on buildings. Uh, it's a a reconstituted fly ash. You can soak a piece of it in water for months, and nothing happens. It comes nicely primed. You can paint it. Uh, it remains dimensionally stable. Probably sinks too. Sink? If you it, soak it in the water. It would, it does sink. You're right. <laughs> so it doesn't, no flood proofing here. If it, if it is reasonable, you're reversible and it's fastened in the mortar joints, I wouldn't have a big problem with it. Okay. And we were thinking again, sort of a grayish color, not probably a little darker than what's showing there, responding more to the base of the concrete. Does anyone else on the committee have any questions, comments, or suggestions at this point? I would be curious as how the, the signage interplays with the facade. Now, I don't know, uh, Michael Curtis, do you have any thoughts on what you might be thinking? We have a, a standard sign that we use. I was it it uh, looks similar to the logo down there, but I was told that um, they're going to do something different, and the uh, I don't think there'll be any signage along the sides. All that said, um, they don't let me make any decision about aesthetics. So. Don't take anything I say with anything other than a big grain of salt. <laughs> we, we, we know that for that, we better come back before you. I only ask, because it may alter the banding if, if you know. Yeah, it's that's possible. Right, whether it would be in between the, uh, the canopy or off to a side, mm -hmm. something that wouldn't compete. Maybe as part of the asymmetry, to hold it to a side. The yeah. drawing shows the back section as sort of a gray or concrete color. But no, it's it's, it's, it's really yellow, more right? it's more of the yellow, yeah. And okay, and that's the intention is to have it is to leave that as it that color. Okay. I think that was also. Jay, that was a preference that was most recently discussed is the, uh, the feelings we got from the owners that they wouldn't want to stray too far from what's there now, except maybe change the green accents, the green and gray to something a little more blue, like a dark blue to 
more closely relate to their logo in the corner here. This is very light, but instead of a dark green or gray, maybe edge towards a blue hue slightly. Was that blue color mentioned in the application? Yes, and I think, Steve, one of the things we tried to do is when we were looking at door cuts, um, we Thermatru makes a factory door, and I, you pardon the screen color, I don't know what color you're actually seeing here, but um, it would be um, a very deep color. As you saw now in the photos, you can see there's a little bit of green hue in the in the doors and the trim on the existing building that we would just um, hedge that towards the blue the blue tones a little darker than seth's shirt but again the the color of the building in the back would still be the yellowish golden color correct okay that was my understanding yes And there would also be a, dark, a deeper cornice there with the insulation that will be added. Okay. I think that air conditioner in the far right comes off because there'll be a system rather than that. Anyone have any additional questions, comments? If not, based on the responses we have so far, I can go down through the criteria for the renovations. Evaluation criteria number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Uh, at this location, the changes are acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none proposed. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, acceptable recognition of and respect for view corridors and significant vistas including gateway views of the city and state house acceptable all in favor of the application speak your names martha i'm a yes jeff yes could we also note that um we're recommending standoffs on the oral trim. Okay. I'll put that in the recommendation section. Eric? Steve votes yes. Eric, is you, have you voiced your vote? I had to unmute myself. Uh, yes. Okay. The, the, the signs need to be, the banding needs to be fastened in the mortar joints. Okay. So we'll just make a recommendation. The recommendation is that the banding, the uh, standoff banding attached through the mortar joints. That's fine. Okay. Then your the application is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck with your project. Okay. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye -bye. Thank you. And I think I think usually Meredith would go through and say at this point that uh, we will get the recommendation forms, and I will email them to whoever is the the contact person that she's been working with to go and see if you agree to the conditions that Eric, uh, that Steve just read off. And if you agree to it, because we'll, we'll send you the scanned copy. If you agree to it, you just email back and say, yes, you agree to them. 
and then um, we can process the application at that point as soon as Meredith gets back. So I think that's how she was working it because usually usually everyone would be around a table and we'd sign it, but in this case we'll just scan it and send it to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Okay, we can move forward to the next application, which is for 20 Baldwin Street, Paul Reed and Alexandra Hellas. Are either of the applicants present? We're here. Both of us are here. Okay. And just as an aside, uh, we, I personally, with my wife, own a property that's adjacent to their property, but it's not affected by this application. As long as you're okay with that, I can still vote for the project. Is that a question to us? Yes, I'm just making sure that you're okay with me participating. Yeah, I mean, you've participated in all the other hearings that we've had <laughs> on this building. Yes, but I just need to ask to make sure that it's, it's appropriate in this case. And, and again, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to get your okay. approval. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and describe your application for us. Uh, we would like to have a 48 foot box panel wood fence, eight feet tall with the top two feet open, installed on our side of the lot line between us and the Vermont Land Trust property in order to provide a screen for their parking lot because all the vegetative screens they have put in place so far have failed. Okay. <laughs> the, the screening was uh, just, by the way, historically was recommended. Uh, I mean, it's required, I think, by the, um, the regulations uh, to screen a parking lot. Um, and it was approved by this committee um, five or six years ago. And they simply have not um, um, been able to fulfill the requirements to date. Do you have any photo documentation you could share? Yes, it should there be. There were two images of the current setup submitted with the application. They should be on the site. We're not set up for share screen. You should have it in the documents. They were available but to us. But they were part of, and we can like, narrate you bring it up, Mike. Yeah, if you need me to share, I can. Just give me a moment to pull. Yes, those, those photos were part of the application. Just helpful to see it in real time. Yeah, if you guys, you guys can keep talking, it'll just take me a minute to track it down here. Do you have any questions about this? The uh, uh, one question, does it need to be eight feet tall? Well, it's tricky because we're way above said parking lot, I mean, the house is. Um, and we did a lot of sort of walking around by ourselves and with the people from Middlebury Fence. And taller than eight feet would be too much. There's, there's parking lot lights that are considerably taller. Um, eight feet is considerably shorter than the first planting they put in there, but enough that if you're standing at the bottom of our lot, it does provide a visual screen. From every other location on the property, it's not so much a full screen as a resting place for the eye so that you don't go immediately to the large expanse of stay mat. The, uh, and it, it's just going to be natural wood? Yes. An example of this fence we, we pointed out, you can, if you're familiar with um, a project that was across from Birch Grove on Elm Street, they put in a similar fence. I think that's also part of the, uh, um, uh, oh, we didn't put take photos of it, but no. you can see it here as an example of what the fence would look like. The one on Elm Street is next to Meadow Martin across from Birch Grove. That's where I found the name of the fencing company. 
Yeah, so I have the two pictures up if you are interested in seeing them. Right. So I one assume... is from fairly low. The first one is from fairly low. And then I think the second one is from a little bit higher up. Yeah. 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 But still fairly low. <laughs> Both pictures taken from your property, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And before the land trust renovated, everything to the um, left of that sort of scrawny maple near the property line was grass. So that's all new parking lot. I'm going to follow up on Eric's question about the height of the fence. I know that the rules say that the side or backyard should be the highest should be six feet. And are you asking us for a waiver of that to make I believe, it? I believe the waiver is allowed in the zoning regulation, which allows for some kind of height adjustment. Mm -hmm. Given the elevation. Given of the elevation. Property. Right. Okay. Okay. That's where you're going with it. Okay. And just for the record, um, we've been in communication with the land trust about it. They have no issues. Okay. This is what that fence would look like in their application. Roughly. Roughly. Although Roughly. when I discussed it with the fellow who came out, we talked about it's a fairly flat piece of terrain. I mean, as flat as you get on this site. Um, and rather than stepping it to adjust for the terrain, we talked about making it a flat top, as it were, and picking up the terrain issues in the on the lower part, you know, in the posts, where the panel set in relation to the posts, because it's only like eight inches over the 48 feet or something. You with me? Yes. So your highest, your highest point will be eight feet and then it reduces? No. We're well, only talking a variation yeah. of four, what, eight inches? I think we measured eight inches over the, the run, if you will, of 48 feet. So it'll be eight feet. Maximum. I mean, there's some place it might be eight, two or seven, eight. I mean, seven, 10. I mean, I don't know exactly how it will work out over that run. I, you know, I can't remember but it will not be noticeable. Given the elevation difference between the parking lot and your, your yard and your house, I think that seems pretty reasonable. We thought so. I mean, we looked at six feet and six feet basically doesn't accomplish anything. You know, once you step back from our property line, you know, 20 feet, you know, your, your, your vision is right into the parking lot. We also talked about 10 feet, but that seemed like too much. That's overbuilt. Eight so this actually what, sounds like a decent compromise given the elevation difference. I mean, the elevation is pretty major and it yeah. seems like the, the eight feet will help maybe screen the cars that are are parked up to it, but does it help you that much? What? As, as Alex said, it's mainly, mainly the, it, it will help to screen the cars, but we will see probably at least half of the parking lot. Right. But it breaks the, the eye vision, right? So, so it, your, your eye stops there rather than, you know, going into the parking lot, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that's our, best solution there. I mean, if they come up with some green stuff in front of, you know, on their side of it, that would be terrific, but they've not been able to do that. Uh, and how do you plan on treating the fence for the stain or, you know, let it go natural? Let it go natural with whatever preservative stuff they recommend, which is sort of in keeping. I mean, it's not a very delicate fence and the architecture of the house or the land trust building is not very delicate. So just sort of plain straightforward. Do you know 
It, it says the material is cedar. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's got a lot of natural oils in it. And again, with a little bit of preservative on it, a clear preservative, it should look pretty nice. Yeah. Right, but if it's not maintained, it'll go ash gray and then black, right? Well, the guy from Middlebury Fence said recoding every three to five years. Yeah. Is that your intention? I think it would look fine as an ash gray and with cedar, you don't need to worry about preserving it. It's all up off the ground. Uh, and painting that fence, unless you can do a Tom Sawyer on it. Uh, um, no way we would paint it. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Nor would we put in a vinyl one. <laughs> no, but I, I'd say somebody's going to, if you're going to have to recode it every three to five years. Oh, you're saying it's not going to turn black once it's gotten silver gray? Uh, okay, we'll stop it silver gray. Yeah. I, I don't see cedar just turn silver gray. It kind of depends on the environment it's in. But uh, I don't think I've ever seen a black cedar single go. Do so. you, uh, you have any concerns with it getting tagged? Getting what? Tagged with graffiti? No. No. Is that a pretty, pretty secluded spot? No. Yeah which is all the more reason, I guess. It could happen. It happens all over the city, though. Yeah. I mean, there's no, we can't guarantee it's not going to happen. But no, no, no. there haven't been any incidents on the property. And actually, we have interesting stuff going on in the side yard with gardens and weird wood piles. And no one's ever done anything but stop to have a conversation. There's, um, there's a fence over on, uh, not too far, uh, across from Steve's property, I think, on, um, on Bailey that has a, a fairly large fence, and I've never seen that tag. It tends to be in an area that's, that's not so exposed, and anybody right. who wants to tag something wants everybody to see it, so it's not, right. it's not, a, prime, it's not a prime spot. Right. <laughs> It's not a bridge. Maybe we'll do like they do in Italy and white, you know, and put posters up that disappear in two years. <laughs> Weed paste. <laughs> Weed paste, right. right. Yes. Does anybody else on the committee have any additional comments, questions, or suggestions? If not, I can run down through the criteria. Okay, the criteria, number one, preservation and reconstruction of the appropriate historic style if the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping. Uh, we'll call this part of the landscaping because it is a fence. We'll call that acceptable as well. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities, no utilities proposed. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Eric says yes. Martha says yes. Seth. And Steve says yes. So it is approved. I have a question. Do we still okay. have to go to DRB? I'll let Mike answer that. I don't know. Unfortunately, um, as mentioned earlier, um, I'm just filling in for Meredith and she's been tracking all of these applications. Um, the only way you'd have to go to DRB is if there was another reason. Um, under the new zoning, once you get past 
design review. If you agree with the conditions in design review, then it becomes an administrative project. That's what I thought I'd heard. I was just checking. Yeah, but I don't know if there was another reason that, that she would have said so, but I don't see anything here in the file she gave me. Um, but I will get the recommendation form from Steve and I will email that to you. And if you're okay with it, just email back and say, yes, we're okay with it. And then Meredith will start to work on processing the application as soon as she gets back, which hopefully will be soon. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming before the committee and good luck with your project. Thank you. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from July the 6th? Yes. Any questions, comments, or revisions necessary? Not that I saw, Steve. Seth, any, Seth or Eric? Uh, motion to approve. Nothing. Did someone second? I'll second it. And every everyone in favor, speak your name. Eric. Martha. Seth. Steve. So the minutes are approved. Does anyone have any other business to discuss? Supper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Out Sorry, on the porch, no. Eric. <laughs> So, so where do we show up for dinner at your house? <laughs> oh, don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> so our next meeting is August the 3rd. And unless anybody has anything else, do I hear a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. Again, everyone speak your name. Who's in favor? Martha. Seth. Steve? And we'll take Eric's motion as his acceptance. So the minutes are approved and an adjournment is approved. And I'll just mention real quick before you guys go, I don't see any applications on the board for August 3rd. So keep an eye out. You might, you might get the night off. I thought that we did have the night off. I I remember Meredith saying there was just going to be one on the 17th in August. Yeah, right. so it's possible. I just took a quick look at the board because I, I know there was one meeting she was talking about, and I remember if it was DRB or DRC, that was not going to have a meeting. So you'll get, I think you're getting next the next meeting off on the third. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thank Very you. Have a great night.